Williams, and welcome to Life After Baby on 1520 AM WCAG and streaming live on WCAG1520.com. From bottles to books, spit up to social media, diapers to dorms, and everything in between, each week I interview parenting experts. Today's guest is Michelle Guinan, the early lit- literacy specialist at the Westchester Public Library in Westchester Borough, Pennsylvania. It's a destination for connection, collaboration, and enrichment through knowledge and community engagement. Michelle has a background in early childhood, elementary, and special education from Temple University and previously taught taught special education in high school for nine years. She has three children, ages 18, 16, and 12. Thank you for being with us today, Michelle. Thank you for having me. And can you start by giving us an overview of what your role is at the library? My role at the library is to do the in-house story times to prepare them for ages birth all the way up to five years old. Excellent. So you design those programs as well as lead them? Yes, I do. Excellent. And so so I'm fascinated that you said story time for infants. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that and why why is it important to have programs for infants? It is very important to start reading as early as you can because if you don't start reading early, you won't get them interested in it. And a lot of the story time for infants, we usually read only one book and then we have a lot of nursery rhymes and finger plays and songs that we do. Okay. And lap bounces too. That's a lot of fun. What's a lap bounce? for someone who hasn't had a baby in a while and, or hasn't had one yet. A lap bounce is where you sing a song and you may do some movements with them on your lap. Oh, okay. So it helps them with prediction if you constantly do the same lap bounce over and over to know that maybe a jump is coming or you're going to turn to the side. They'll learn that prediction a- aspect. Excellent, excellent. Now, do parents have to be comfortable singing to come to something like this? Uh, more It would be helpful if they sung, but not everyone sings. Do you have to do solos? I sometimes do do solos. (laughs) So you're comfortable singing. Would a parent, so if a parent doesn't necessarily want to do a solo, are they still going to be comfortable? Uh, The parents never have to do solos. Okay. All right. (laughs) Only myself. This is just coming from someone who had a bad experience in eighth grade and and may not want to do a solo in front of everybody at the library. So tell us, can you give us an overview of the other story times that are held at the Westchester Public Library and what might be available to parents of kids of different ages? Sure. So we start off, do you want an overview of what a story time is like? Yeah, let's start there. Sure. Okay. We always start out with a welcome song, of course, and then we have everyone look for Wags, which is our in-house dog puppet. Oh. And the children love the puppet. And Wags comes around and greets all the children by name. And then we sing a song and greet all the children by name because children love to hear their name. And you would be amazed at how early they recognize their name. So when we're saying hello to all the children, as soon as they hear their name, that two-month-old actually perks up because they hear their name. That blows my mind. Yes. So then we do a book, we do a lap bounce, we do nursery rhymes, and we roll dice to pick a nursery rhyme. So it gives the kids interaction with that. And then we have dice that we're also rolling for songs that we'll sing every week. Okay. So you roll a dice and that tells you what number seven is, Mary Had a Little Lamb or well, whatever it pictures. might be. Well, pictures, yep. And it might be Mary Had a Little Lamb. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So this is for what age group you're talking about now, this format? We do that for babies. I do it for the toddlers and for the two-year-olds and three-year-olds. And we always do nursery rhymes all the way up to three years old. And it really does help with their speech and their early reading readiness with the nursery rhymes. Okay. So... So, t- so, all, so I used to have an old Mother Goose book when I was a kid with old Jack Spratt and Tom Thumb and I don't know, all kinds of things that I don't remember anymore. So you're saying that's not uh, old news. We should still be latching on to these. Oh, yes. Yes. If we read nursery rhymes, the cadence, the repetition, the rhyming, it all helps with their reading readiness and their language skills. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. So don't get rid of those that old Ooh. book from your childhood. No. Is Mother Goose a go-to? Is that still one that you use? Yeah, we use a lot of the mother. The classic. Mm -hmm. And are there updated resources as well? Are there more modern nursery rhymes that you're aware of? I am not aware of any modern ones, Okay, but I'm sure there are some. Just curious. Mm -hmm. So stick with the classics. You can't go wrong with a classic mother goose, huh? Right. 
right. Yeah. Oh man, you, you're probably very good at trivia, because I <laughs> I feel like there yeah, are often <laughs> I feel like my parents play trivia on a team, and I feel like there are always questions about nursery like rhyme? how many plums in a pie or something, or how many you know something from an old school nursery rhyme. I don't know. So excellent. Okay, and then are there programs for older kids as well that yes. are story time hours, and what are what are yes. they all about? We we do have a play K that is on Tuesday afternoons, and half of that is a story time where we read books, and the books are, of course, a little bit more difficult than you would read to an infant. And then the last half is I put out educational games, and we just do, like, it's like a preschool. Oh. But the parents are involved or the caregiver that is there. Okay. They, it's it's a lot of fun. So we it's have. not a drop-off program. A Par- uh, parents or a caregiver comes and stays with the child and participates yes and then we try to do a lot of stem activities there we have done science experiments building bridges when we read free billy goats gruff (laughs) things like that yeah so it's definitely a little bit more extended than the story time excellent so it sounds like even from birth the programs are interactive you're not just passively listening you're either you're bouncing on a lap you're doing things you're that creates the, the memories, Excellent. you know, when you're moving and the vestibular motion, it really helps children, okay. especially like the lap bounces. When you're holding them in your lap as you're reading, that all helps. Excellent. Yeah. So so how young is too young? If, if someone's listening and they're a brand new mother and they really need to get out of the house, which sometimes happens, and they have a six week old, is that too young? I have six week olds in my program. Yes, Excellent. that's fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's good to know. Yeah. Probably a great way also to meet other new mothers. It, absolutely. I think a lot of the, the younger story times is for the social interaction of the mothers as well. You get different ideas and you're getting out. You're meeting new people that have the same they're in the same spot in their life as you are. Right. So Excellent. And I, I think it's really important what you said about the ability of infants at that age to recognize their own names. And I think a lot of times with babies, they know a lot more than we give them credit for. I'll never forget when one of my children was about a year old. Um, we were at a, a vacation rental and there was a big fish on the wall and they pointed and said, like, fish. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. I didn't even know you knew what a fish was or how, you know, and somehow along the way we'd read enough books or looked at enough pictures or something that it stuck. And I was fascinated because they were just at the point where they could start to articulate it. And I thought, oh, you know way more. I need to be very careful what I say. They're sponges, right? That's what they always say. They're taking everything in. Fascinating. So use that to your advantage with your child and use it to to read and talk to them and communicate with them and, and help them progress and learn what their world's all about. Absolutely. Excellent. Um, so tell us about, we're getting now, so you have programs that are for for pre-kindergarten or kindergarten. What's the thousand books before kindergarten program? Okay, that may seem like a lot of books before <laughs> kindergarten, but if you read one book a day to your child, you will reach that goal before they are three. So that doesn't seem so hard. So it doesn't, it isn't that hard. And it's a program where every hundred books you're going to come in, bring your folder into the library, you get a sticker, you get a coloring page, and we have a rainforest tree on the wall, and your butterfly gets to move up. Oh, as, your yeah. butterfly flies up the tree? Your butterfly flies up the tree as you get to your thousand books. That's... And as the children get older, they understand it more and they get into it more. That's exciting. Yeah. And I know, you know, a good way to do that is to just make a routine in your house, maybe at nighttime. You know, we always used to yes. read just as an activity all the time, but there was always a rule. We didn't go to bed if we didn't sit and read three books. Right. And when they're super young. That might only take 10 minutes. <laughs> it can be pretty quick. And that's how you're going to instill that love of learning, by having some kind of routine in your house, modeling it for your children. Let them see you reading your books or your newspaper or reading on your Kindle now. So it's a good way to get children interested right. at an early age. Excellent. What what kind of, you just brought up an interesting um topic. We didn't discuss this ahead of time, but what about electronic reading resources for kids? Does the library have provide access to anything like that? And what's out there? Yes. So if you go on ccls.org, you can access the overdrive. And there is an app, Libby, which I have on my phone and every one of my my house has (laughs) on their phone, where you can just take out books on your library card. 
and you can read them on your phone, you can read them on your iPad, your Kindle, however you would like to do it, because on the OverDrive, no, on the Libby app, you can transfer the books to your Kindle. Wow. So, th- so, but if you don't have a Kindle, you can read them just on your phone or yes. on your computer or on your... I didn't know that. And how many titles are available that way? There are less titles available than there are actually in the library, but there's thousands. And there's audio books as well. So there's... There's a lot of children that may not be as interested as sitting down with a book or an adult who may be driving to work. Right. And you can just listen to an audio book right. instead. Okay. And I heard someone recently say, I'm trying to remember if it was a reading specialist or not, but somebody say, if, you're, if your child's struggling, maybe have them listen to the audio book as they read along. Yes, that definitely helps. It, it, you get to see it. So you're learning through sight. You're learning through hearing. Then it. You get two ways of learning. It can't hurt. <laughs> right. And reinforce pronunciations and things like that. Right. I'll never forget when my daughter was talking. She was reading a book, and she was telling me about this character named Skimidity. And I was like, Skimidity? That's an odd name. And I said, do you mean Schmitty? And she said, no, it's Skimidity. <laughs> I was like, I hate to tell you this. <laughs> That's Schmitty. You know, and so I think sometimes when you read unchecked, a lot of times you, you form uh, pronunciations in your head that aren't necessarily true. I, so I remember doing that with The Outsiders. Oh, yeah. And I instead of calling them the Soches, I read it, the whole entire book is The Socks. Right. And, and then when I saw the movie, <laughs> right. I was like, oh, it's The Soches. <laughs> right. Isn't that upsetting when that yes. happens? You form some in your mind that you really like. Um, okay, so um, with Thanksgiving and winter break uh, fast approaching, are there any fun reading related activities that people can do at home that you can suggest? For Thanksgiving and Christmas, do you want books on that topic or? Sure, just uh, yeah. I mean, there's I mean... A, I, when I'm doing story time, we're going to focus on doing family type books for Thanksgiving and for the holidays. And you can definitely have a goal over the holidays. Let's see how many books we can read. Maybe read a book and then watch the movie. Oh. So say, like maybe start before the holiday break, say, let's read this book. And if you finish that book over the break, we're going to get to watch the movie that goes along with it, which can be very motivating for a child. Especially for a reluctant reader or somebody who's dragging their feet or Mm -hmm. not pushing themselves to read at a level that they can be reading at. Yes. I like that idea very much. Well, we are going to take a break, but before we do, I'd like to thank our sponsor. Everyone knows how fast kids grow, so why spend all that money when you can get the same styles at a fraction of the price? Once Upon a Child in Exton has everything your kids need, so save time and money by shopping at Once Upon a Child. Have your kids outgrown those nice overalls? Trade them in for something they can use. Only at Once Upon a Child at the Whiteland Town Center, 193 West Lincoln Highway in Exton. You can reach them by phone at 484-873-3900. And tell them we said hi from Life After Baby. We'll be right back in a few minutes. Welcome back to Life After Baby. I'm Luann Sims. I'm here today with Michelle Guinan, who is the Early Literacy Specialist at the Westchester Public Library here in Westchester Borough. We've been talking about story time and the resources that are available for young children. If you have not been to the Westchester Public Library in Westchester Borough, I highly recommend it. It's one of the coziest little buildings yes. that I have ever been in, and the children's section is still upstairs, I imagine? Yes, it is. Am I right? Yes. I used to go there frequently when my kids were little. Um, we talked a little bit about books and reading and story time. Can you fill us in on what other resources the library provides? What other programming and offering families could take advantage of? Sure. Uh, well, in addition to the story times I do, we have a story time Monday evenings that are the first and third Mondays of every month, and that's a STEAM story time where you're going to get a some kind of STEM project that you're going to do in addition to a story time. And then we also have Lego Club. I have seen many wonderful creations on the shelves there in the in the library. That's great. <laughs> yes, that is the second and fourth Monday of every month at 6. We have Chess Club on Saturdays from 10 to 1230, and that's for 6 to 12-year-olds. And they just go into the community room, and they play chess, and there is someone there to help 
help them with what you do with chess. I'm not a chess player. Okay, I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> so they don't have to know how to play when they come in. They can no. learn when they get there. Yes, Excellent. because it, they start at six. So a lot of six year olds are not going to know how to play chess. So that's yeah, great. And I can't know. remember which way the horse moves. I don't and who The bishop goes this way. And so my okay. boys play. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's great. We also have outreach that we do at the library and we go to daycares, the Y and Galdensia, and we're doing a tour drive for them right now oh, for excellent. the holidays that are coming up. We also have TAB, which is the Teen Advisory Board, and that is through grades 8 through 12. And they're now going to meet on the first Thursday of every month at 345. And we also have Teen Tuesdays, which is from 330 to 5, and that is for ages 11 to 18. And they're just going to have snacks and activities out for them for after school, something for them to do in a safe place. Oh, so just a place to gather and hang yes. out. And mm-hmm. can they talk? I know libraries traditionally are quieter. Yes, it's in the community room. So in the community room, which is where we hold our story times, you can close the door and okay. and try to be a little quiet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> excellent. Now tell us about, I, I remember when my children were very young, we're going back 10 or 12 years now, but there was always, I always heard that for story time, you had to register very quickly because the spots filled up. Is that still the case? And what advice do you have for people to get a spot in one of these sessions? Well, they do fill up very quickly. And that's because the community room is so small in the Westchester Public Library. Different libraries do have different amounts that they can take in their story time, depending on the size of the room. Uh, Just get on there as early as you can and register. And if you have a problem getting in, I always tell everyone to email or call me and we'll see what we can do. Okay, see if you can work it out. Yes. And are there fees to participate in story time? No, there is a donation that we, we request because we are a 5013C, okay. but um, no, there is, no, it's... Okay. Library's free. Okay. <laughs> so people can check the library for upcoming registration periods and then act quickly if you'd like to register your child yes. and to get a spot. Okay. What about, um, I know that I used to, I know I'm dating myself here because we used to watch movies on a DVD player <laughs> and VCR, but I used to go in and frequently rent movies from the library. Um, now a lot of people stream instead yes. of that. But are there other things like that that families should know of? I remember seeing cake pans at one point. Yes. Well, actually right now we still do rent DVDs and there is a section of the DVDs that are all running for free right now. So if you would like, you know, people can come and check that out. We do rent out cake pans. There are play, there's playaways and there's also, which are audio books that you can take out. So they, there's something different. You can rent uh, the mobile hotspots you can take with you. You can rent a mobile hotspot from the library? You can. What? For a fee. It's a very nominal fee, but you can rent a mobile hotspot. I had no idea. Yes. And also you have museum passes at the Westchester Library. You can rent them and you just go up to the children's desk, you request them. We only have it for Chester County Historical Society and the Academy of Natural Sciences, but throughout the Chester County Library system, there are several. For instance, you could go to the Elmwood Park Zoo and you can just rent a pass for the day and it's free. Which, let that sink in for a minute because Mm -hmm. I was not aware of that program until recently. And think about, you're taking your family to something that might not even have a huge admission fee, but times however many people you have in your family, you're suddenly investing a lot of money in this experience. Yes. And you might want to check with somebody in the Chester County Library System might have a pass. So it's basically like the library has a membership and then different people borrow it on different days. Yes. So can you schedule those ahead of time? Yes, you can. So I would definitely call ahead of time and you can call the children's desk, whichever library, and you can go online, look it up, see what passes each individual library has, and then you can request them for the children's desk and they will have the dates that you can take them. That's really remarkable. And the and the audio book, um, I forget what you call them, the the playaways. The playaways. Uh, I drove to Florida one time with both of my kids, just me and the two kids. Oh. But we did our homework ahead of time. We went to the library. We rented several audio books that I could play on DVD, as well as those devices for my kids, so that when people we got tired of being together in the car, yeah. they could tuck into a corner and listen to a book privately on tape, and they just loved it. They yeah. loved the whole experience when they were they were a little bit younger then so the idea that they had their own little mechanical device that they were operating was just fascinating to them so it was it was really great 
Okay, well, let's move on to our next segment. Um, we have a segment that we call It Takes a Village because we don't always have all of the answers, and that's why we need to help each other out. So we polled some local parents about ways to make reading fun. Some kids seem to take naturally to it, as we spoke about. Maybe the younger you start, kids are more inclined to enjoy it. But not every child is automatically interested in reading. So we asked uh, some friends how we could make reading fun for our children. Mark said, whether we're home or out and about, we will point out letters that we see on packaging, posters, billboards, clothing, and everywhere. What a great way to start introducing children to reading and how the sounds that letters make, etc. I think that's a great idea. I have a little nephew who's four who has been doing that somehow, and he goes around reading, you know, Abercrombie on people's sweatshirts and things, and everywhere he's he's telling you what the letters are everywhere he sees them. Um, Abby agrees with what we were just saying and says car rides are for audiobooks. So um, what a great way, instead of having kids looking down maybe at games on iPads or um, watching a Disney movie for the hundredth time on a DVD player, audiobooks are a great way to occupy your children on a car ride. Jim said, we are really lucky to live in an area with so many free story time programs. Your calendar can quickly fill up. That's so, true. Yeah, as we've heard, <laughs> take advantage of those. Sammy said, we have a special reading nook and read at least one book together a day. That's a great, I love the idea of creating a space in your house that is for calm, quiet, undistracted reading. Yes, I, we have that in my house. We have a special chair. It's Pop Pop's chair. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was his old chair, and we that's where my children read their books. I love it. And we I would also encourage parents to have their children on their laps, make it a comforting, make it a hug. Right. And right. they'll associate that with a very emotionally rewarding time. So that Excellent. will stick in their brain that way. Nothing better for me than a snow day where you just, you know, Put on a cup of tea and, I don't know, yeah. light a candle or something yeah. and get a blanket and sit down with some books. I think that's great. And Kristen from Beyond the Bookend says, turning turn reading into an adventure. Read The Three Little Pigs and then visit a farm. Or read about George Washington, followed by a trip to Valley Forge. So that's similar to yes. what you were saying you do in, in the story time, even from the youngest kids. You right. read a book and then maybe do an activity that's relevant. Absolutely. Yes. And I think I mentioned this in an, in an episode uh, we had done previously that my kids one time came home with a dinner about reading, um, eating dinner in the bathtub. And somehow we ended up eating macaroni and cheese in the bathtub oh. that night. I, I don't remember. Well, that sounds like fun. I don't remember the book. They were, it's one of their greatest memories because they thought it was so crazy yeah. at that age. So um, so let's, t- let's, let's talk about our parent pop quiz. Um, so life with kids is unexpected and so are the questions in this segment. So we're going to spin our parent pop quiz wheel and see what question we land on for Michelle. So let's give the wheel a spin. And you can answer this as a parent or as a professional, whichever works for you. And the question we have for you is, what is your favorite parenting resource? My favorite parenting resource. Your favorite parenting resource. Is my own parents, especially my mom. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. So lots of advice and... Uh, advice and honesty. She's going to tell me like it is. That's good. You know, I, she's not going to dance around. She's going to give me an honest answer if I ask her for advice. Right. Awesome. That's important, isn't it? Yeah. And I think some people don't, uh, I'm not saying all grandparents are easy, but some people don't look at the value of their experience and uh, appreciate the fact that they've no. been through all of it. <laughs> I, I, we're very fortunate that my children are very close to all their grandparents, and I think they have a lot to offer uh, my children. So. Excellent. I think in a lot it's of important. cases that's uh, that's the situation. So so hats off to grand- yes. grandmothers and grandfathers. <laughs> Today's episode was brought to you by Once Upon a Child. From cozy outfits for story time to playtime toys, they have everything that kids need at a fraction of the cost. Once Upon a Child is located in Whiteland Town Center at 193 West Lincoln Highway in Exton. Thank you for tuning in to Life After Baby. 
Life After Baby was created and produced by Leslie Hudson and hosted by Luann Sims. Our theme song is by Doug Keller. We'd like to thank Michelle for joining us today. You can learn more about the library's programs by visiting them at 415 North Church Street in Westchester Borough or online at wcpubliclibrary.org. Visit our website at lifeafterbabyshow.com. Find our podcast wherever the finest podcasts are found and follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Life After Baby Show. And don't forget to take care of yourself so you can take better care of them. Thank you.